Welcome to CLSI's Subcommittee Orientation Program for the CLSI AST, Antifungal, and VAST meetings. This was recorded in advance of the January 2023 meeting. We hope this orientation will help you prepare for your first CLSI Antimicrobial Subcommittee meeting. In this program, we will describe CLSI, how to navigate the upcoming meetings, and some details about CLSI, including how you can become involved. CLSI has three subcommittees, Antimicrobial Susceptibility Testing, or AST, which focuses on bacteria and humans, Antifungal and Veterinary AST, or VAAST, which addresses bacteria in animals. CLSI's AST committees and documents fall under the following areas. Antibacterial testing, antifungal testing, veterinary antibacterial testing, or mycobacteria, nicardia SPP, and other actinomycetes. If this is your first meeting, you're likely going to be considered a guest. A guest is someone who attends the meeting but is not yet on a working group or subcommittee. Today, we will go over how you can join as a volunteer. But first, here are some suggestions for how you might make the most of your first meeting. The agenda materials distributed prior to the meeting include everything you need to follow along with the presentations. During breaks and meals, we recommend you network with other attendees. This is a great time to learn more about the meetings and feel free to ask questions of the presenters during or after the sessions. Although we know it will be difficult, we recommend you try not to multitask. You will soon realize it will pay off to remain fully present during the sessions. And finally, please try to attend the new attendee meet and greet that occurs before the main reception. Here you will be able to interact with other new attendees and outreach working group members and staff who will be there to assist you in any way they can. Let's begin by providing a quick overview on the organization. Who is CLSI? CLSI, or the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, is a not-for-profit organization that brings together volunteers to create medical laboratory standards. CLSI documents range from laboratory automation to method evaluation, but for this presentation's purposes, we will be focusing on our microbiology area. CLSI is also a membership organization, and if your organization is a member, you are also included as a member. If your organization is not a member, you can join as an individual member. Membership allows you to participate in CLSI document and subcommittee activities. CLSI is structured with a board of directors that works in coordination with expert panels and consensus council. Expert panels are committees of volunteer experts that oversee a specialty area and help with the technical content of a document or project. Consensus council is a group of volunteers that upholds the standards development process and ensures that the consensus process for documents is properly followed. Documents are developed either by document development committees or through working groups under the subcommittees. Document development committees are a group of volunteers assembled to draft a single document, and when the document is complete, the committee is disbanded. Subcommittees are standing. They oversee ongoing data that feeds into one or many documents. Working groups are groups that report to subcommittees. They are either standing or ad hoc. A standing working group oversees ongoing data or information, where an ad hoc is formed for a specific purpose and disbanded once the task is complete. CLSI staff is made up of project managers, editors, and operations staff. They help facilitate the document development process and support the above-mentioned groups to manage the consensus process edit documents to ensure the quality of publications, and to ensure that products are communicated and delivered to customers. Here is a brief history of CLSI. 
The organization was originally established as the National Committee on Clinical Laboratory Standards, or NCCLS. Its focus was to improve patient care and to develop a more formal consensus process to standardize laboratory practices. NCCLS was accredited by NC in 1977 as a voluntary consensus standards organization. In the late 1970s, NCCLS became home for the NRSCL, a collection of reference systems. In 2005, NCCLS was changed to CLSI. Today, CLSI is made up of over 1,400 member organizations and 500 individuals from around the world, with over 2,000 volunteers and manages a library of over 250 documents and products. CLSI follows a process where documents are evaluated and reviewed by three constituencies. The goal of this process is to bring representatives of professions, industry, and government together to ensure that the viewpoints of all that may be affected by a standard or document are considered. Meeting minutes and materials are available to the public, and meetings are free and open to everyone. Comments from meetings and in writing from users of the documents are actively encouraged. CLSI even offers a public review period during document development. CLSI publishes standards and guidelines, but also provides derivative products and educational materials that help support these standards and guidelines. Some CLSI documents are guidelines, while others qualify as standards. Standards identify essential requirements for materials, methods, or practices for voluntary use in an unmodified form. On the other hand, guidelines identify requirements for materials, methods, or practices for voluntary but recommended use. As mentioned, CLSI aims to achieve a diverse volunteer pool with appropriate representation from interested constituencies affected by our standards and guidelines. The constituencies are made up of industry, government, and professions, and here you can see some examples of each type of organization. These organizations not only represent CLSI's membership, but also CLSI's volunteer base. Next, let's talk more about the AST subcommittee. The mission of the AST subcommittee can be found here. It is also listed in the front of each AST document. CLSI's AST subcommittee was formed in the 70s with MOTU, Disk Diffusion Method, as its first document. The first publication of M100 was in 1990. M100 publishes annually, and in 2023, CLSI will be publishing the 33rd edition. Subcommittees are overseen by volunteer chairholders. The current ASD chairholder is James Lewis, the second, PharmD, FIDSA. The vice chairholder is Amy J. Mathers, MD, DAVMM. Together, they oversee the subcommittee and the AST meetings. Vice chairholders may serve for two years as the vice chairholder, then four as chairholder, and then serve two years as vice chairholder. This eight-year rotation allows the chairholder to always have had experience or have an experienced vice chairholder on hand. Subcommittees are then made up of members who are appointed. They serve on working groups and vote on technical decisions and draft documents. Advisors who are also appointed cannot vote but provide technical expertise. Both members and advisors serve one-year terms for up to four years. Subcommittees also have reviewers. Anyone can become a reviewer and be added to the official roster. In order to do so, you must submit a disclosure of interests and your current CV. In addition, an administrative fee is required, which is usually covered through an individual's organizational CLSI membership. Guests are not on the official roster. However, they can still provide input. 
guests are not officially added to a working group until they are added as a reviewer by submitting their information as previously described. This is just a quick snapshot of what each role on the subcommittee can do. These are the documents that are overseen by the AST subcommittee. As you can see, the revision cycle varies, and some documents are standards where others are guidelines. As mentioned, CLSI has standing working groups. The ASD subcommittee has eight standing working groups as outlined here. They review the data and make recommendations consistent with the primary functions mentioned here. This is a quick snapshot of the ASD subcommittee structure. The standing working groups are outlined in dark blue, with their ad hoc working groups below them. In addition, there are working groups that are not under standing working groups. They are not considered ad hoc. Those are listed on the right-hand side in dark gray. If you are not part of a working group, you may still attend a working group meeting. The ad hoc working group meetings take place separately and before the subcommittee meetings. To attend these, you would contact the ad hoc working group chair. Seed LSI staff can help put you in contact with them. Standing working group meetings and plenary sessions are open to all registrants during the registration process. How is an issue approved? First, there is a detailed discussion of the issue at the ad hoc working group usually with submission of data to support a new or modified recommendations. Ad hoc working groups typically meet several times between biannual meetings of the subcommittees. A vote of the ad hoc IGUG members may be taken during the meetings. Then, the ad hoc working group chairs present a detailed summary of the issue to a standing working group for a preliminary vote. Finally, the standing working group chairs present a detailed summary of the issues to the AST subcommittee, and a final vote is taken during a plenary session. If you're interested in learning more about the subcommittees and their projects, visit clsi.org backslash micro. Here you'll find more details, including meeting materials, minutes, workshop presentations, upcoming meetings, and more. Next up is the Subcommittee on Antifungal Susceptibility Tests. Here you'll find the mission of the Antifungal Subcommittee. The current leadership is made up of the chairholder, Philip Dufresne, and vice chairholder, Gary Prokop. The Antifungal Subcommittee was started in 1997 with M27, Yeast Broth Dilution, and has been growing ever since. Here you'll see a list of committees and documents overseen by the Antifungal Subcommittee. Note that the revision cycle varies and some documents are standards, while some are guidelines. The Antifungal Subcommittee is made up of three working groups that oversee the listed primary functions. Now, more about the VAST Subcommittee. The mission of the VAST Subcommittee can be found here. The VAST subcommittee is overseen by chairholder, Nebraska Diaz Campos, and vice chairholder, Brian Lovers. The VAST subcommittee was formed in 93 and kicked off in 94 with M31P, proposed standard VET ASD methods slash supplement.
Here you'll see the list of documents that the VAST subcommittee oversees. Similar to the ASD and antifungal subcommittees, the revision cycles vary and are made up of standards and guidelines. VAST also has some reports. Here you'll see the list of standing VAST working groups. They oversee the primary functions that are listed. All of the VAST working groups report to the VAST subcommittee. Are you interested in getting more involved? Find out how. The CLSI subcommittees meet once or twice per year, typically in January and June in various locations in the United States. Here, you will find a brief schedule of when agenda materials are due in advance of the meeting. First, figure out which working group you'd like to join. Typically, ASD volunteers start with an ad hoc working group, but you could also begin with a standing working group if you'd like. You can apply online to a working group at clsi.org backslash vol. However, the easiest and quickest way is to speak with the chairholder about participation. Make sure you are a reviewer, meaning that you've submitted your CV and disclosure of interests to CLSI and qualify as a member or have paid the administrative fee. Finally, plan to attend a working group session and join in. A reminder, you do not need to join a working group to get involved. Anyone can raise issues slash contribute data. However, joining a working group is the easiest way to get more involved and get access to the information and timelines for the meetings. Here are some of the benefits of becoming a CLSI volunteer. From learning about the latest developments to networking and growing your resume, and of course, it's fun. A recap of ways to get involved. If you haven't already, register for the upcoming meeting at clsi.org backslash meetings. Review the agenda materials emailed to you before the meetings and put the meetings on your calendar. Review your subcommittee's document that describes how breakpoints and quality control ranges are established. Talk to other CLSI volunteers. Finally, attend working groups and planner RE sessions. You'll also find the CLSI project managers and their emails listed here in the first blue box if you would like to contact one of them directly. Thank you for your interest in the CLSI Susceptibility Testing Subcommittees. We hope this was helpful and encourage you to reach out with any questions. Please feel free to reach out to one of the project managers mentioned, or you can send any generic questions to volunteer at clsi.org.